Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today we're taking a look at a couple of new offerings, well one of them is pretty new, from Hobby King in the Mini Quad department. And the motors of course, 2204 2300 kV motors. And the two motors we're looking at today are the Multistar Elite. That's this one, the green one, which Hobby King have been hyping up as being a super high quality motor with a wonderful efficiency. And there's the Quantum motor over here. Now this is a again a 2204 2300 kV. The Quantum range is being pushed as being a, a really good sort of a mid-range budget, but budget to mid-range motor with lots of features and lots of bells and whistles. So um, I'm going to put these side by side. We're going to have a look at the motors very closely, the quality of construction, what you get in your, when you buy them, and how well they perform, which is of course quite important. Um, obviously you immediately notice that the, the Quantum motor has the 5mm adapter uh, with a little dome nut which you usually throw away and put a lock nut on if you've got half a brain and also has a little plate for minting the little like I think that T motor props that the carbon props that have the holes in them but really um, I don't know that that's this much of an issue anymore because I don't know many people that actually use those props on mini quads because well you know they're pretty expensive and you know mini quads are, are not something that you just pamper you throw them around as hard as you can fly them like you stole them so you're not going to use well I'm certainly not going to use an expensive carbon prop with one of these mounts on a mini quad certainly not on a, a budget type or mid-range motor now over here the multi-star doesn't have one of those no nope, you don't get one of those and also the hole spacing on here is uh, different now this has a nine millimeter hole to hole across those two parts of the uh, if I can find something to point with I'll use my modeling knife this spacing from there to there is nine millimeters, and that's the standard for those props. You couldn't just slide one over here because the spacing there is, I believe, 10 millimeters, so it won't fit. Just as this adapter, this prop adapter here, won't fit on there because this has a much thicker shaft. The shaft isn't turned down on the on the uh, quantum motor. They've turned the shaft down to about two millimeters so that the adapter will fit on. On this one, the hole in the bottom is three millimeters, same as the shaft. They both have three millimeter shafts. Now. Um, something else to be aware of is that the adapters are a five millimeter thread. That's great. You know, the actual thread that goes through your propeller, the actual shaft, five millimeters, because then you don't have to fart around using stupid little adapters from four millimeters like some of the cheaper motors, especially the 1806s. A lot of the 1806s uh, have a four millimeter shaft require you to use a spacer. So these don't. That's very, very good. Uh, also, my, uh, wires, they have about the same length of, of silicon wire. The wire on the Elite is thinner than the wire on the Quantum. It's not going to make a snot load of difference over this shorter run, but there's something to consider. You could, those who, um, on one side could say this is lighter, on the other side you could say this can carry more current without wasting voltage. In most of my mini quad installs I cut these wires pretty short anyway because I wire them directly to the ESC, so I don't care about the thickness of the wire. It's not a, not a major factor in my book. Now, this one comes with bullets already installed, and this one just comes with bare wire ends. But they do provide you with some bullets if you want to use bullets. Don't use bullets. Bullets are a waste of time on a mini quad. They're simply another point of failure and another area where you can waste power and voltage. And, you know, if you, if you, I've yet had to change out a motor at the field, so that's not a big deal. As far as mounting hardware goes, or screws, you just get the four screws that hold the prop adapter onto the motor. That's all you get with the Elite. With the uh, Quantum, you get a whole bunch of screws. Some of them will hold the prop adapter on, but some of them also go into the base for mounting. And this is another area where it's really worth looking at the difference between these two motors. Now, if we look at closely at the Elite, you'll see that the these holes here, they I think they're three millimeter holes. There's four of them. They equally seem to be equally spaced from the from the shaft. I'm not sure that might be a little bit closer in the other one. Doesn't matter anyway. But uh, you'll notice that. You can see the wires through that hole, you can see the wires through that hole. So you can use quite long bolts because the wires don't actually start to about here. So it doesn't matter if your bolts are a little long with the Elite because you're not going to impinge on the wires for the coils or the wires that come out of the motor. Um, that's very important. Now if we go over to the Quantum motor, you'll notice a different state of affairs. Uh, we have the same 3mm mounting holes and there is still quite a gap between the base of the motor and where the coils start. but but, and this is very important here, unfortunately the silicon wire is directly sitting on the base so you can't run long screws through here or you'll impinge on that wire possibly 
go through the installation and short them out so you have to be far more careful with the quantum motors as to the length of the mounting bolts you use. Something to think about. Um, I noticed also on this quantum motor that the little circuit wasn't exactly all the way on when I got it. I had to push it on to clip properly so it hadn't actually been properly clipped in. Quality control I suppose. This is just one. I'll check the others. They seem to be right. And the clip actually moves with the shaft so that's good. It's not going to wear. The shaft won't wear around the clip. Notice that it does protrude below the level of the motor so you have to have a hole on your mounting point. That's uh, pretty important or that'll just bind up and stop. Same for the Elite, that also has the same situation where, come on focus camera, come on, get your act together, where the shaft protrudes below the bottom. One thing I did notice with the Elite, for an Elite motor, um, notice that that circuit doesn't spin with the bell of the motor. So that means that C-clip is actually slipping on the shaft. That is not good, it's starting to spin now but it wasn't before, so this, this, there we go, it's not slipping anymore now. That's not good at all because it means that, sh that groove will wear, the groove where the circuit fits in will wear, and eventually it'll get really sloppy and the, spring, the circuit will fall off or it'll get really loose and you'll get play, ac uh, axial play, that motor bell will go up and down, it makes rattling horrible noises. So, yeah, and also, if you look very carefully, you'll see that it's not actually gonna be very well balanced because the washer underneath is eccentric. And as that turns around, when the whole thing decides to turn, it's going to throw the balance out. They say they balance to 0.005 grams or something. Well, that wash is going to throw that all out the window. It's going to be completely, you know, pointless at other balancing uh, numbers they're quoting because that washer isn't balanced, not centered. Bah, uh, never mind. So looking at the top, you can see the windings in this. And um, Hobby Kinker made a big deal about those windings. Look how nice and precise and well layered they are. Also notice how thick the wire is and how few turns there are. That's quite important because if we compare that with the Quantum, you'll notice the wire gauge used is much thinner and there are a lot more turns and they are also kind of higgledy-piggledy all mashed up and so in theory that would produce a less efficient well in reality it doesn't actually matter a whole lot unless you're really trying to cram the maximum windings on a minimum space you can do higgledy-piggledy windings really inductance doesn't care it's just the number of turns it doesn't matter how they're applied so one benefit of having nicely layered of course is you don't get pressure points where you've got wires touching, crossing over and weak or potentially weakening the insulation layers between them. So it'll be interesting to see how these two compare in that respect. So there you go. And you can also see that turned down shaft for the proper adapter on there. Um, so that's, and as you notice with this one, as I said before, the circuit turns with the shaft. So you're not going to get a, uh, a situation where you wear out the groove in the spring. And I guess it will be a little bit of imbalance though, because you could one piece of mass here that's further from the centre. Nah. We'll see how they work out when we put them on the bench and run them up, see if they are reasonably well balanced. So here are the two motors with the prop adapters installed. Hobby King have made a bit of a point about pointing out the fact this has got a knurled base plate here to give extra grip on the prop. That's not a bad idea. Um, and both are held in with hex, uh, one millimetre, I think, uh, two millimetre screws with a um, hex head on there. And remember, remember, absolutely essential when you put these together, you must always use Loctite. I use the stuff that Hobby King sells and it seems to work. Blue Loctite, so you can remove it later if you need to. Um, always use Loctite, or those screws will come undone and then you'll find yourself flipped out of the sky or the things will rattle and all sorts of funny bad things will happen. So, yep, what I'll do now is we'll put them on the scale, see how much they weigh. And first up, we've got the Quantum motor and it's, wait for it, it's 29 grams, 29 grams on the nose. Rats with the little silver um, spinner nut on there as well. And now we go for the Multistar Elite, and it is, oh, it's a gram lighter. Now it's worth mentioning, I forgot to mention before, that these come in clockwise and counterclockwise versions. Now there's no difference in the motor itself, except it does have it written on it. Now the difference is in this spinner nut here. Some will tighten the normal way, and some will tighten the other way. So you've got to make sure when you wire them up that you have them rotating in the correct direction for the prop adapter, otherwise the prop nuts will tend to come undone rather than tighten up with the torque of the motor. Okay, here we are, we've got the test stand all set up. We have the Multistar Elite motor up here on the stand, and we've got the watt meter down here. Battery's pretty freshly charged, it's a 1500 milliamp 35 to 70C Turnergy Nanotech. I'm trying to stop things from floating around the bench here. I've got a bit of sticky tape behind that. Got an Afro 12 amp ESC. Keep it in the family, the Hobby King family. And we'll see how it goes in terms of performance. Move a bit of stuff out of the way so I don't blow the bench apart. Here we go. Well, first of all, what we'll do, we'll go for 150 grams of thrust, which is like a hover thrust. And we'll measure the efficiency there. Then we'll go for full throttle. This is a 5.3 gem fan prop.
Now we've gone to the Gemfan 5.4 prop. You can see it's black. We're going to do exactly the same thing. See what the hover efficiency is like and what our maximum power is. And now we've got the quantum motor, the quantum 2204 uh, 2300, and it's got the 53 gem fan prop on it. Let's go through the same procedure, get some numbers, move my paperwork out of the way so it doesn't all get blown away. So first of all, we're gonna go for the hover power, and then we're going to go for full power. move some things that are in front of the stand there, I don't want them getting sucked in. Um, so. And here we go this time with the 5.4 gem fan. Again, same routine, hover thrust, and then we'll go for full power. Well, there you have it, a couple of motors, not too bad actually, I'm quite happy. Now, if I had to choose between the two, um, based on the way that circlip spins on the shaft alone, I'd actually probably go for the Quantum. Now, it's got a bit more power at the top end, it's more efficient, it seems to like 5.4 props better than 5.3 props, it's more efficient at the hover thrust if with a 5.4 on it than it is with a 5.3. Um, and it comes just in one hand, you get one motor, like no left hand, right hand, adapters that I saw, whereas the Multistar can come in this little box with the, the four motors, two clockwise, two counterclockwise, which is great until you break a motor and then you think, hmm, do I need to order a clockwise or counterclockwise? But it makes no difference because the motors are the same, it's just the adapter that's different. Hopefully there'll be spare adapters available. I haven't actually checked to see if there are. Um, so yeah, it's a toss-up. It's a, Honestly, at this stage, it looks like a toss-up. But what I'm going to do, as I usually try to do, is give them a bit of a torture test, put them on some of these quads, give them a thrashing and see how they last because that's what really matters now. As I say, that spinning circlip, I've seen it on some of the cheap motors, like the, uh, I've got a bundle of them up here somewhere, except now that I'm looking for them, I can't find any of them. But uh, the little 1806 motors from RC Timer, for example, um, they start out really well, they're, they're cheap, they're powerful, but oh, they start rattling because that little circlip and the bearings wear and they get all, you know, and then they vibrate like hell and it makes, just listening to a quad with those motors on, it sounds like it's an, an empty can full of bolts rattling around. So yeah, that's something I've got to look at. Longevity, something I don't know yet. I don't know. The bearings look reasonably good. It's a three mil shaft, so they're a reasonable size bearing. We'll just have to try it out and see. But in the meantime, you know, you've seen the numbers. You can make your own choices. I wrote them down so that I didn't forget because, um, you know, I'm old. The, the um, just read this, take my glasses off. Now the, the Quantum, um, it's not as efficient in hover as the, or in, in the hover power as the, uh, what is it, the Multistar. The Multistar Elite is more efficient, but only by a watt or two. I mean, it's not a huge difference in efficiency. Um, when it comes to full power, well, the Quantum's got more power on a 5.4 prop. Um, it doesn't have more power on a 5.3, that's really interesting. It seems like the Quantum motor likes to be loaded up more than 
the multi-star elite. So if you want to run five threes, lightly loaded, multi-star elite will probably do the job really well. If you want to load up your 2204 motor, get more power out of it, then well, the Quantum is actually going to deliver more than the multi-star. That's really interesting to see. For one watt of extra power, you actually get, what is it, um, 18 grams more thrust. That's not bad. That's quite an improvement on the 5.4 props. So I could load them up with 6-inch six six props, of course, but remember, we're starting to draw some serious current when we get to the 5-inch props and, uh, and, we're, and you know, on the 5 by 4 props on these motors, and they're only rated to 3 cell. And so I'll do some more destructive testing later on, see how they go. But before I destructively test them, I want to put them in a quad and see how long they last, because I don't want to have to go buying spare ones, especially with the multi-stars when, you know, um, they may have the pack of four available that may not have the single individual units. We don't know. I'll have to check and see. So there you go. Uh, my opinion is by either of them, you'll probably be quite happy. Quite happy. What I'm going to do in a coming video is look at the difference between 1806 and 2204, because the, you know, the sort of, there's no real difference in performance as far as a lot of people see it. You know, I mean, I've used both and they seem to be pretty similar, but we'll put them on the bench. We'll try them out and see whether there really is a difference in performance between the two different size motors. In theory, in theory, the 2204 may be more efficient with bigger props because the angle of moment for the magnetic force is, it's got a bigger radius. So it's got more leverage, but we don't know. Um, uh, it's, it'll also check out things like motor sync and so forth because that's an issue when you start getting these little fast motors spinning really quickly. But in the meantime, those are the two motors I was looking at today. Lots more motor reviews coming up because I'm doing a sort of a shootout. I'll do the individual I'll do shootouts between two, then I'll take the best of them and we'll just do a big spreadsheet with all the data on it. You can choose for yourself. I've got the DYS motors. I've got the Dragonfly motors. I've got the Sunny Sky motors. I've got the Tiger motors. I haven't got any Cobra motors yet. So if anyone wants to send me one, send me a Cobra motor and I'll include it in the test. There you go. Thank you very much for watching. And as usual, questions, comments in the space below this video, kindly provided by YouTube for the purpose. And now it's time for me to get back to the bench.